Welcome everyone. My name is Scott Morris. I am the Director of Business Development for GTS Distribution. We're back here again with another one of our publisher to retailer webinars. Uh, today we are joined by my good friend and close compatriot, quite literally because he's right down the road from me in Texas, uh, Hunter Shelburne, who is from Pandasaurus Games. And we've got a lot of awesome stuff to talk about. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple of different things. First thing is we're going to talk about Machi Koro and the fifth anniversary edition, uh, which some of you have more than likely had in your stores already and been selling. We're going to talk a little bit about the expansions for the fifth anniversary edition as well, and maybe a little bit about the packaging, kind of what they were brought into for it. Um, and then we're going to talk about two upcoming games, uh, Ahail, if, make sure I get that right, Ahail, which is spelled A-R-R-A-I-A-L, but that's right, Ahail. Uh, which is a really, really cool looking game. Uh, like just optically, visually, it's awesome looking. Um, and then we're also going to talk about Dead Man's Cabal. So if anyone was at Origins or saw any of the coverage at Origins, there was a lot of pictures about these games and a lot of attention around those games, a lot of really cool stuff. Dead Man's Cabal has these awesome little skulls. Yeah. I don't want to steal any thunder from Hunter. So um, with that, I will remind everybody that, you know, for being here live, you are eligible to get a free demo copy of one of the games. We're going to be giving away a free demo copy of the Machi Koro 5th Anniversary Edition to everybody. Um, there's nothing that you need to do. Our GTS sales reps have all the information after these are done to contact you and get that all set up to ship out to you. Uh, but it's just our way and Pandasaurus's way of saying thank you for joining us, which is awesome. Um, and of course, everything is on the table. <coughs> bad pun that I always use, but any kind of questions that you have uh, about the games, about the company, about the brand, anything like that, feel free to chime in, let us know. Uh, you can ask a question by just hitting the chat bubble at the bottom of your window, uh, and then you can either send a question to all the panelists, which are Hunter and myself, uh, or you could send it to all the panelists and the attendees so that everyone can see that. So um, like I mentioned earlier, Hunter, I'll kind of monitor the chat window. If anyone has any questions, I can kind of jump in and let you know. Um, but with that, I will be quiet and let you do all the hard work. So ladies and gentlemen, Hunter Shelburne. <laughs> hey everybody, sorry about the voice, just wanna go ahead. I've got con crud, so that's, uh, that's gonna be real fun. Uh, so apologies in advance for all that. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up a quick uh, doc here, start off with some uh, stuff about paying the source. I know most of you might already know a good amount about us, but I uh, wanna go ahead and just show off some stuff. Give me just a moment. Uh, we'll share, and I'll share my uh, doc here. Cool, and we'll go ahead and begin in. Awesome. So, uh, Pandasaurus Games, uh, we are best known for Machi Koro, which we've been selling for quite a while now. You may also know us for The Mind, which has been a big seller for us in the past year, which has won the Origins Award uh, for Best Card Game, won a lot of awards in that regard. So, you probably got a few of our titles, the Dinosaur Island, Wasteland Express. What we're going to be talking about today uh, a few of our new things uh, on the docket, things are coming out or just either just come out or are coming out right now. And I've got a couple of things in here that Scott didn't mention because I just threw them in because they're upcoming. We won't talk a huge amount, but I just wanted to let you know they were coming out. Uh, so we've got Machi Koro 5th Anniversary. A lot of you guys probably have this in stock. This is the effectively the new version of Machi Koro. This is going to replace all the previous SKUs of Machi Koro. Uh, this is uh, the same price as original Machi Koro. Uh, the cool thing is with that same MSRP, we're able to include a lot more new cool stuff. Uh, some new selling points that you guys can point to uh, as upgrades for pe even people that have the original game that want a newer version, maybe they've worn their old version out, or for new players who are looking for a bigger value in their new games because let's face it, a lot of new games have uh, increased the value points for a lot of the older stuff that's come out. So things that we've been able to do with this new version at the same price are molded plastic coins. Uh, you'll see all the, all the cardboard coins in the original game have been replaced by uh, some one, three, or one, five, and ten uh, plastic coins are very cool looking coins. Uh, we we're, we're actually got to use them in our Machi Core Legacy that's coming out as well. Uh, that's our cool, I think our coolest upgrade are one of the bigger selling points for it. Sorry, to, uh, to, nope, just something bumped in there. Uh, we got uh, larger cards, so the card size is a little bit bigger. Uh, the original ones were not mini sized, but a little bit, just smaller uh, Euro sized cards. These are more close to the plain si card sized. Uh, you've also got a a cool box. It's got a full stamp. This is just a, one of our older prototype images, but underneath the Machi Core, there's a fifth anniversary gold stamp. Uh, and we've got uh, bigger dice as well that aren't, aren't mentioned on here, but the dice are about 50% uh, larger in this edition. Uh, of course, Machi Core, big selling point is it's one of the best gateway games out there. Uh, it's a modern classic, uh, not to toot our own horn, I guess, but it's, it's in that same range of, of games that uh, are very accessible, something along the lines of a 
Settlers of Catan, A Ticket to Ride a Munchkin, those easy to play games that people really like to bust out at group parties and things like that. So uh, it's, it's generally considered a classic. It's got a lot of name recognition at this point. It's got a really cool look to it in addition to all the new components. So for new players that are new gamers that haven't necessarily played games in the past, it's a really great introduction to gaming. And for people that have owned this game or know about it, this is a great upgrade for their collection. And we'll be able to keep it in stock a lot easier going forward. This will, like I said, this will be our new edition of the game going forward. Uh, um, so. Hey, Hunter, there was a yes. quick question about Please. the game. Yes. <laughs> the game. Um, any questions about the, or any timeline around the game coming back to hobby retail? Uh, well, I can answer that. Um, it's it's concern, it, unfortunately right now it's only available through one distributor uh, at Hobby Retail. I, I don't I, I'm not sure I want to talk about that on this stream, but if you send me an email at hunter at pandasaurusgames.com, I can give you some more information on uh, the game. Uh, there is a Quantry edition of the game. It is it is kind it is available. I can get you the information on that. Um, it's it's a specific deal with us and uh, uh, our partners right now that we have to we're trying to expand the availability but um it, it, it is currently available you can get it okay no worries i uh, i put your email into the chat window as well so sure thank you thank you yeah if you have if you have some, a question about something that we don't cover just shoot me an email there uh if if you have something about the any of these games or if it's something that's like offhand that's similar to these games just just ask it here uh feel free to interrupt me whenever scott yep no worries good yeah awesome uh, so that's that's Machi Core. This has been out for a few months now. So uh, if you haven't seen it in stock, it is under a uh, uh, it is under Machi Core Fifth Anniversary Edition currently. So if you've been seeing like Machi Core out of stock, it may you may be looking at the older edition. Uh, it also was out of stock for a short period of time, but it is back in stock. We just had a restock hit, so this should be available again. Uh, let me click on here. Uh, we got Machi Core the expansion. So this is a new release for us. Uh, this one's literally within the last week or two here. Uh, same MSRP, twenty nine ninety five, but this is a different configuration to what we've had in the past. Uh, so this is uh, this is both the Harbor expansion and Millionaire's Row expansions in one box. Uh, in the past, Harbor was the first expansion that was that was its own set, and then Millionaire's Row was the second expansion. Uh, with expansions, you always have that situation where you might have the set. You kind of have second and third expansion syndrome, where the second expansion comes out, or the excuse me, the first expansion and second expansion, where you get that first expansion, and it sells really well. People are always looking to expand that game initially, and then that that, that next expansion comes out and it drops off a bit. Uh, well, we tried to solve that a little bit by putting them in the same box. Uh, Harbor is an extremely popular expansion for us. It's uh, it adds a fifth. There, there's a fifth player. It adds a lot of tweaks to the game that people add. A lot of people add these uh, the Harbor expansion in almost standard now uh, because of the changes it makes. It, it does a lot of stuff to the game to make it more of a gamer's game. Uh, so it's kind of like the the Machi Coral Plus. That's that's where that comes from. Where we have a little plus at the end there. It's uh it's it's going to add a lot of cool gameplay elements. Millionaire's Row is kind of uh, if you like Machi Core, if you like the Harbor stuff, it's going to just give you more cool stuff. Uh, so having all the same box, it's going to be the same box size as Machi Koro, same price point. And similarly to the original, we were able to upgrade a lot of those components. So you've got, uh, instead of cardboard coins, you've got plastic coins. In this one, you get 20s that are purple and really chunky. Uh, you've got some construction icons, which are like little orange uh, triangles that come out. Very cool little tokens. Uh, the card size, again, larger and matches up the original game. Uh, you've got, uh, again, cool embossed box. And again, this is going to match up uh, pretty much precisely with everything in the original or in the fifth anniversary. And it's going to take the place of the old SKUs. So now you've got two Machi Koro SKUs to take, keep track of, and that's it. This is a really good recommendation for people who have played the game and just, again, want it to become more of a gamer's game. The Harbor expansion adds the adds a boat mechanic. It adds some new ways of, of creating the layouts that you pull your cards from. Uh, and just generally, it's, 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 a, it's a great and easy step up from where they're at. Uh, it's got the same price point. It adds a fifth player. It's, it's got a lot of stuff that people are going to be looking for that want just that more Machi Koro experience. Uh, and that is available now. That just that literally just uh, hit, just re landed with the restock of Machi Koro. So both of these should be available as we speak. Uh, do we have any questions, Scott? Nope, no questions coming in just yet, but just as a reminder, if anyone uh, needs to ask a question, you can hover over the video. Uh, at the bottom, there's a bar, and there'll be a little chat bubble, and you can type your questions in there. 
Awesome, awesome. Yeah, it, again, it, the Machi Core is something you, you most likely have seen before, so I understand it's not really a shock in the world, but we, we really wanted to emphasize that, that this is one of our, this is our biggest evergreen seller, is continued to sell great for us. We just, our main goal with Machi Koro has been to keep it in stock and uh, get those expansions back out there now that we have full control over everything. So we're excited. Uh, we're really, really excited about where Machi's going. And, and with that in mind, I did want to mention this, even though it wasn't on the docket. People get quite questions about this. Uh, this is Machi Core Legacy. We get a lot of questions about this at conventions, uh, from retailers, at all the shows. Just want to mention that it is on its way. Uh, ignore that date at the top. Uh, that was that was delayed a while back. This is a little bit of an older doc, but uh, Machi Core Legacy. Uh, this is going to be uh, hitting at uh, at Gen Con, be in stores shortly thereafter. Uh, this will be a Machi Core Legacy game. This is uh, the essentially you're you're going to be creating a town over the course of ten games. It's going to be changing. Uh, and per- making permanent changes to your town and to the buildings that you can select. It's uh, designed by Rob Daviau and J.R. Honeycutt, so guys that have been involved in lots of legacy games. Uh, this is probably the most accessible legacy game out there that I've played, at least. I've played a lot of them, uh, but this is a very family-friendly legacy game that'll be out, uh, like I said, around Gen Con. Not a lot of preview stuff I can show on this one, but uh, it will. It, it just want to let everyone know it is on its way. We do get a lot of questions about it. Uh, we don't want to spoil a lot of stuff. It's really cool plastic moments, though. There's really cool stuff in this. Uh, it should be it should be a pretty big one for us. We're excited. Yeah, we we've gotten a lot of really good pre-orders on this game, and Amazing. we um I again I don't want to spoil anything either. I I've had the opportunity to play through the beginning of this game, um, and I've I've played pretty much every legacy game out there, uh, almost all of them. Um, it it what you just said it blew me away in terms of how easy it was because when I when I played for about maybe fifteen minutes with Nathan and Molly I was like I walked away thinking this is something I can teach anybody like there's no yes. concern there's no this is going to be too complex or this isn't going to you know be fun enough or anything like that I mean there's just it's so simple and I remember walking away feeling this is Machi Koro but it's going to be my Machi Koro. Yes. Like I'm going to get to play the way I want to play. I'm going to get to design the town the way I want to design with the group, right? And it's just exactly really, really cool stuff. So yeah, we're looking forward to this one. So. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very much excited about this. This is going to be a cool one. Uh, again, it's when families come into your store that want something that want want a legacy game. They may have heard about legacy games online. They may they may have a general idea what they are, but they don't necessarily know much about them. Uh, this is a great one to put in their hands if they're Machi Goro fans that want some more Machi Koro and new Machi Koro. This does not play exactly like that first game will will be shades of it. Once you get past the first game, it's completely different. You start growing your town, you have new new abilities added to you, you get new stuff. It's it's taking a lot of the stuff that we did with the original Machi Koro and, and people want wanted to do different things with it. Now we can do that in Machi Koro Legacy because awesome. it gives us a little more let, let's just spread our wings a little bit. Um, Tabitha had a quick question. Is there any sure. chance that uh, that Pandasaurus will release a uh, FLGS promo for the game? For Machi Koro Legacy, unlikely. But for other for other Machi Koro and things like that, uh, in addition to our other new games, our plan is we want to have more promos available. Uh, for the Legacy Edition, it's kind of hard to integrate a promo into that game uh, generally. But it but for Machi Koro, we would yes, we, we our plan is to have promos available. Uh, we are working on printing that stuff now. Uh, we're ca- kind of catching up on that on that level of support, but the idea is to have uh, more more promotional material available for everybody. So that is our goal right now. So we will, uh, if you if you want to check uh, check out our uh, retail sign up, you can also email me for that. We can get you on our our email our retail newsletter uh, to let you know when that kind of stuff starts happening as well. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks. No problem. So that's uh, much core legacy. We'll we'll kind of move on from that. Uh, not a ton more to say on that at the moment. More to come, of course. Uh, so Dead Man's Cabal. Uh, Scott mentioned it a little bit there uh, before we started. Dead Man's Cabal is one of our new IPs. This is a uh, kind of in the Dinosaur Island weight class as far as uh, uh, components and length of game and things like that. Uh, this is a new game by Daniel Newman. He's a uh, he's this is his first big box game, but he's an up and coming designer. He's got a lot of stuff that just got signed uh, amongst a few different publishers, including ourselves. Uh, he's well known in the design community, and uh, it's a really cool interactive little uh, Euro game where you're trying to use skulls to raise people from the dead. Uh, it's an interesting theme. It's 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 kind of a spoof though. You're essentially necromancers trying to throw a party, and uh, no one wants to come to your party because you're necromancers. So 
uh, you want to raise people from the dead to attend your party. Would uh, you say it's a dead man's party? I would say it's a dead man's party. And we, d- we did say it was a dead man's party. Uh, but then we showed it, the box to a lot of uh, people that hadn't played the game and they thought it was a party game. So, so we changed it to dead man's party. I, I couldn't refuse that joke. So. It's a good one. No, we, we wanted to call it dead man's party. It was originally dead man's party, actually. It was, uh, we, we really liked one go, one go around here. Uh, but uh, yeah, it turned out it t- looked a little, they thought even though it has a really cool metal cover, they thought it was a, a, a party. They, they thought it was a party game. So we changed it to this, but it, it's the, in the same way that we did with uh, Dinosaur Island, we wanted to stand out on everyone's shelves uh, just in a different way. We don't want to, when we did Dinosaur Island, we kind of did that, that vaporwave neon color. We kind of started that trend and then a lot of other games kind of took that and ran with it, which is awesome. Uh, it's a really cool art style, but now that that's out there, we don't want it to be just, we don't want to throw another game and just be another one of those on the, on the shelf. We want all of our games to stand out. So this is a def- definite departure for us. It's a stark black and white cover. Uh, you're going to have uh, the, this really dark black skull. It does that. We actually did do foil embossing on the uh, crown. Uh, so it looks very minimalist, but also very metal uh, on the shelf. It's it's targeted definitely at the Dinosaur Island crowd of gamers, people that are looking for something a little chunkier than a Machi Koro potentially, but uh, there's a lot of uh, buzz around this one. It picked up a lot of steam at Origins. The catch with this game uh, and something that you'll notice here at the bottom of the screen where you have the little uh, graphic are these skulls, and that gives it a ton of table presence. It's got some really rad looking art, but those plastic skulls really stand out on a table. Uh, a lot of our feedback has been at Origins and other and conventions where we're demoing this is they just they, they, they have to be convinced not to buy it once they see the skulls. Uh, this is going to be really, this is going to be out uh, towards July on this one. It, it had a little bit of a delay. We we're expecting at the end of June, but got a little bit of a delay on that one so uh once that hits stores uh we're excited about the having a tail around the holidays around the halloween holidays dead man uh, day of the dead things like that uh where this can play into a lot of the holiday shelving hopefully if it's not sold out by then but we're really excited about this uh it takes place about an hour uh but the explanation doesn't take very long if you have this on a demo table perhaps and want to show off the the skulls uh, we also will have a going back to what was previously asked about promos. There is going to be a promo pack for this that will be available uh, to retailers when we get this in distribution. So uh, if you want to follow up with that, us on that one, we can do that as well. Uh, again, just shoot me an email at the email uh, hunter at, at, at actually hunter at pandasaurusgames.com. We can get you on the retail newsletter and make sure you get those promos. Um, also, that's a good point to bring up is that um, apart from the Machikoro 5th Anniversary Edition demo that the retailers will get for attending the webinar, if there are any Pandasaurus games that you're looking to get a demo of in your store, feel free to contact the GTS sales reps that you work with. And uh, Pandasaurus is part of our promo or part of our demo uh, group. So we can get that all set up for you. So as Dead Man's comes out, uh, any other games that you're looking for that you would want to demo in store or have available on a demo table, uh, Hunter hit the nail on the head. I mean, the, this game, it's a game that when you see it on the table, you are absolutely drawn to it. Whether you, you like that kind of skull look or not, it's just such a different thing that you're like, I need to know what's going on on this table. So it's, yes. it's going to be really successful, I think. Yeah, we're, we're really excited about this, especially after the reaction at, uh, at Origins with the uh, pre-release for it there. It was a, it was a strong reaction. Uh, it, was, it was climbing the BGG buzz list quite a bit uh, at the show. Uh, but yeah, that is, that is Dead Man's Cabal. Uh, again, uh, in that dinosaur island, here's some of the component views. Uh, as you can see, these are, these are what these skulls ended up looking like. They came out very good. Uh, and this is one of our final production component uh, copies here. Uh, so you can notice it's got quite a, quite a table presence with all the boards. Uh, you've got, uh, got a number of rooms there. It's got a simple, like I said, in the, in the same vein as Dinosaur Island, instead of having one continuous board, you've got uh, a number of smaller things that you're doing, but they all interlock in a really uh, cool and understandable way. Uh, the teach for this game is not very long at all. Uh, so let me here. Oh, there's, there's our other release here. It's a Heil. Uh, so this is uh, another release. Uh, this is going to be out a little bit sooner. Uh, just launched at Origins. We are going to have it out by the end of this month here. Uh, so you expect that in about a, a week or two. Uh, Heil uh, is, a, again, it sounds it sounds different than it's spelled. This is a Portuguese word. Uh, it's, designed by a Portugal, Portu- yeah, it's designed by Portuguese designers uh, from a Portuguese company. We brought it over after Essen last year. And it's a very puzzly game where you're trying to create a party by dropping blocks onto your board. Uh, you'll notice the board here. Uh, I oops, went too far. Sorry. Oh no. Let me go back. 
One moment, sorry. Oh, okay, let me try that again. Sorry, guys. There we go. Okay, there we go. Uh, you'll see down here at the bottom that it, it has very uh, – it, it's a polyomino game, but uh, for terms of customers, when you're trying to sell games like this, I know the easiest call is to call it something like Tetris or call it a puzzle game, and there is no game better to call a puzzle game than this because this is – the most Tetrisy game that I personally have ever played. Uh, the game only has two things that you're doing in it. You're either spinning the middle, uh, the middle uh, little spinner here that has the cards on it, or you're dropping the pieces. And however those cards are aimed at your board is how those pieces will drop onto your board. So in the same way as you're playing a puzzle game or Tetris or whatever puzzle game you want to use as your comparison, uh, the direction of the pieces matters on your board. Uh, and how they fall on your board is going to matter because you're trying to either match colors. Whenever you match a color, you'll attract one of these little meeples to your party. And whenever you complete a row, you're going to attract a white meeple to the, to the little bar at the top, and it'll raise the bar. So that bar is kind of like a bonus point area. Uh, so that, that is the simplest explanation. And on a demo table, that's really all they need to know. You, spin the, you either spin the dial to make it aimed at your board a different way, or you drop a piece. And you can do up to three actions a turn to do that. Uh, this has amazing table presence. It's extremely vibrant, extremely colorful. Uh, it's extremely easy to teach. And when you do compare it to puzzle games, again, we don't always like to do that. Uh, the X game is like X game, but for terms of demoing, for terms of sales, that's sometimes just the best way to do it. And in terms of people that don't play a lot of games, uh, this is a perfect introductory game because they, everyone's played Tetris. Not everyone's played board games. Uh, so this is a great way to just draw them in. It's very colorful. They know what those pieces are. They kind of have an idea what those pieces look like. So they know what they're looking at to a degree. Uh, it's, it's just, it, it's an easy way to sell it for us. Uh, and, and this, uh, am I seeing the picture correctly that you have double meeples? Like yes, the double meeples. That's a really cute little area control thing. Uh, once you've matched two colors, uh, it's, it's, you get one of the little single meeples. But if you have the biggest area of that color, say if I have the largest red section, I'll attract the little dancing red meeples to my party. Oh, dancing meeples. Nice. Okay. <laughs> they're, 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 we call them dancers. They're really cute. I, they're some of my favorite components. Uh, That's it, unique. It's very different. It is. It's, it's a very, like I said, very colorful, very cool components. Another, another one similar to Dead Man's Fall that in, in a different way, though, that when you lay it on a table and kind of put the pieces out there and let people see it, it is, it's, it just, jumps off the table at people. They love the little meeples. They love the double meeples. It, and it looks like something familiar to them. So they're attracted to that. They know what they're looking at to a degree. Uh, this is also designed by a couple of uh, designers that have a pretty strong pedigree for those that maybe are more gamery gamers. Uh, they designed Nuno and Paolo did a uh, Nippon and they did Madeira, uh, some heavier Euro games. So if you've got people that are into that, this is another way to sell it to them. But generally I'd see this as more of a gateway game. Uh, people that are, into puzzle games might be more interested in this and uh yeah just uh, just a cool cool game when you lay it out and put the pieces out the, the one thing that attracted me to this game i first saw this game at gamma uh when you guys were showing mm -hmm. off kind of some prototype stuff of it and the thing that struck me and we were talking with nathan and molly about this is that when you, you talk about polyomino games like you were talking about earlier there's so many of them that are on the market right now but there's none that look like this and there's no. none, and, and this is not a, a negative against any of the others, because there are many great games out there like this, but this one is easily the most colorful, it's the most happy, it's like, you can't look at that box cover and not kind of giggle a little bit or understand that it's a, a lighthearted, you know, game. You're not, you're not looking at that box cover going, ah, oh, this is going to be a strategic 4X war game set in 1812, right? You know, exactly. Is... I, think, I think they really, they, they bought into what that, a lot of these games that, are, that have these types of pieces are trying, they try to retheme to get as far away from puzzle as possible. Right. They want it to be. They want. They want it to look like a Euro game or like something else. And I feel like Nebo and the the designers for the, on this one. They they bought in. They said this is a puzzle game. We're going to make it look like a puzzle game. You're, it's going to be bright. It's going to be colorful. Uh, and you're going to just want to. You're going to want to eat the pieces essentially. Yeah, they're like candy. Yeah, like candy. That's exactly. Yeah, right. And I think they really bought into that. So I think this for one of these uh, polyomino puzzly type games. It really the, the look matches the theme and the weight. It's not. It takes about forty five minutes to play. It's not very long. It's it's a it's a in and out type of game. It's really fun. Very cool. uh, it also it, it it it's had some some acclaim already. We've had a, I know Tom at Dice Tower took a look at it. And he called it. He said it, he liked it better than all of UA Rosenberg's trilogy of uh, games, the Spring Meadow and the Indian Summer ones. 
Uh, so that's really cool. Uh, he that's it's got some, impressive verbiage there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, he really, he really enjoyed it. So we're hoping, we're hoping this carries through. It's, it's again, a really positive response at Essen at, at origins. Uh, it's been one of the more anticipated games. It was top of the geek buzz there uh, during the convention. Uh, people were really looking to get a hold of it. So uh, we're really excited to get that new guys in y'all's hands. Um, and the last two things on here, I, I kind of spoiled them a second ago. I know we didn't mention them at the beginning, Scott, but I... No, these are uh, good to talk about. I definitely. stuck them in. I stuck them in. No, these, uh, are these, these are two uh, games that are releasing at a similar time, not the exact same time. This is going to be July and August releases again. Uh, but Past Tally, this is a, a game from another Japanese game. We are pretty good at finding some cool stuff over there and bringing it over to the U.S. Uh, Past Tally is a game uh, by Masaki Suga. Uh, it's going to be a $30 MSRP, and this is a tile laying game uh, that you are trying to create paths between like colors. You'll notice on the board in the bottom left there, uh, or in the top right there, there, there's these little colored tokens around the outside of the board. Uh, each player has their own color, goes two to three players, so an interesting player counts, a really tight little game. Uh, and what you're trying to do is you're connecting those colors to each other. So if I'm the purple player, I'm trying to create a route that connects my purple tokens. Uh, there's only two actions to take in the game. There's playing a tile or moving one of your outside tokens. Uh, but that creates a lot of cool choices, especially once these the boards get built up in a way that there's complicated routes. The, the thing you're trying to do is create the, a more complicated route. The more tiles that you pass through and the higher that those tiles are, you notice that there's some stacked on top of each other, uh, the more points you'll get. Uh, so you're trying to make the route really complicated and intricate and going through a lot of stuff to, mat, to get to your tokens so that you get a lot of points. Uh, and that's the that's the crux of the game. That's really all it is. If you've played any other path building games, kind of like Suro, things of that nature, it's kind of like that mixed with the uh, number nine. It's got a bit of verticality to it and a bit of laying out a path. Uh, very tight game. It gets pretty thinky. It's got it's got two modes. I've noticed when I demo it. Uh, it's got the non gamer mode where kids or casual players will come up and see that it's very pretty. It has an amazing table presence. Those colors just pop off the table. Uh, and they'll just come up and just start playing tiles and see what they score and just do that. And then you've got the gamers that have been waiting on this for a while. They, this was a, a Tokyo Game Show released last year. People have been really anticipating its release in the U.S. Uh, and uh, they really they, they get into it. They really start thinking about every move. Uh, get, sometimes it gets, they get a little too thinky. That take turns can take a little bit, but it only goes two to three players, so it keeps the play time down. Uh, it says 45 to 60 minutes. I've never had a game of this last round longer than 45 minutes. Uh, the game it, it's, it can click along pretty well. It's it's a really fast little game. Again, another game that has really good table presence. The board itself it's hard to get scale on this image, but it's it's a lot smaller than a normal board. Uh, it has a little scoreboard that goes with it as well. It, it it'll fit side by side with another game on a demo table. It will not take up the whole uh, the whole zone if you don't want it to. Uh, so you can have it demoing along with other stuff at the same time. Uh, and again, it's just such a bright game, very colorful game. The cover of that rule book is, gonna, is actually the cover of the box itself as well. It'll be an Amachi Koro size box. So it'll show up really well with the other stuff. Um, this one's going to be a late July, early August release. So keep an eye out for that. And one last one here, Mental Walks. So this is a, uh, there's a couple things to ignore on this one. It's actually a two to nine player game now, not a four to eight player. We expanded that uh, Play, the play number there. Uh, this is a new John Jonathan Gilmore game. You know him from Dead of Winter, from Dinosaur Island, things like that. He designed, he co-designed this with Micah Sawyer, uh, and it is a puzzle game, a cooperative puzzle game where you're trying to use foam blocks to create a central structure. Those are the foam blocks in the game, or similar to final versions. Uh, there are there's there are these cards that show a different perspective of the puzzle. Each player has their own perspective. There's four of these that show the four different sides. And then there's a uh, there's five through nine that show a corner angle that give you more of a 3D perspective, but they don't show any color. The catch is everyone is keeping their card secret, so only you know your perspective. Everyone has 10 minutes to collaboratively build that puzzle. Uh, after 10 minutes are up or before if they think they've got it, they, they vote if they think they've solved the puzzle, and then you check the solution. If you've got it right, you win. If you don't, you lose. There's 60 of those puzzles in the game. Uh, they have they range from family mode, which are the first thirty, or challenge mode, which are the last thirty. But in reality, they go in they kind of go uh, increasing difficulty from one through sixty. So you can actually play it in order, and the puzzles will keep increasing in difficulty as you go on. You can play it kind of like a campaign in that way. In addition to that, of course, you've got some other things. Uh, you've got uh, uh, glitches, which will actually increase the difficulty because they'll give people 
uh, ways that are in, impeding them solving the puzzle, like uh, mixing up the colors. You can't touch certain pieces. Uh, you can't talk. You can't touch the piece you're intending to touch. I can't touch yellow pieces. There are restrictions that are individualized like that. Like I can't talk. I can't touch tri excuse me, triangles, uh, something along those lines. So there's ways of increasing the difficulty. But as, as John sometimes does, he threw a trader aspect into this game as well. It's not it's, it's an optional play, so not everyone loves to play trader games. Uh, and they're not always great for kids necessarily because they it's harder for them to understand. But uh, if you really want to mess with people, you'll actually shuffle, in addition to the cards that you normally deal out, you'll add one additional, which is the solution to the puzzle. And if someone's dealt that solution, they are the trader of that game. So then you have a couple different options. You, you can either vote that you have the puzzle at the end of 10 minutes, or you have to vote that you think someone is a trader and has been subtly trying to get y'all to guess the wrong puzzle. Uh, so it's a really fun little aspect to it. Um, but there's a, it's not something you have to play with. We tried to make every, this as accessible as possible and you can scale the difficulty as hard as you want. If you want to throw glitches in, you can. If you want to throw restrictions, if you want to throw the trader in, it gives you a ton of ways to play. And since it goes two to nine players, it fits effectively any play group size. And this will be a $40 MSRP and that will be out in August. Yeah, this is, I'm glad you threw this in here. This is actually, of all the things that Pandasaurus has in our lineup, and mind you, I am a huge Dino Island fan. This has been the most fun experience I've ever had playing a Pandasaurus game. Awesome. Um, when we sat down and played this game first, it was very simple. It was just like you said, here's your card and you have to make this thing. And the minute you move one thing, somebody else is like, you're crazy. That doesn't work. You have to do it this way. And it's fun to me because, and I'm sure a lot of the retailers have heard me mention this in, in past webinars, if you've been here for others, but I'm, I'm not a very big personal fan of party games that focus on embarrassing moments or things to laugh at other people for. I'd rather play a party game that you're laughing with other people about what's happening. And that's what this does because you get into those moments of, well, no, look, I'm looking at my card. This is right. You're wrong. You're completely wrong. But then that person is like just as adamant that they're right and that they're looking at it the right way. And it just, it poses a really interesting puzzle and a really fun time at the table. And it's been one of the most fun things that I've played all year. So I'm looking forward to this. I'm really happy to hear that. Yeah. And this is, I, I keep saying it, I'm going to say for a lot, what we try to aim for is having a unique table presence and a unique like look of the game itself. So all of our games, you'll notice the box will look a little bit different. Some are bright, some are metal, some are, you know, geometric, however it looks. Uh, but we want all the games to have a really cool table presence. When you put it on the table, you, people are going to notice and people are going to take notice and they're going to want to play it. And middle blocks is, falls into that as well. They all do it in a different way. This is just when people see foam blocks lying on a table, they just want to play with them. It's like, it's kind of like that Lego thing where you see Legos, you want to mess with them. It's that's, We're all kids at heart. <laughs> exactly. And we throw, we, we would just throw this on a demo table and it's, you can have nothing about it there. They put people are like, what is this? I want to play it. It's a simple demo. I mean, the max game, the max that a puzzle can go is 10 minutes. So it's, it's all, no matter what you do, it's always going to be a 10 minute demo at most. Uh, and it's go, it's going to look good on a table. The blocks are nice and chunky. Uh, it, even putting it back in the box is its own little mini puzzle that we enjoy. <laughs> it, it's, it's just, it, it all, it all fits in there perfectly. Don't worry about that. But it's, it's a lot, of, it's a lot of fun. Uh, uh, there was a quick question from yes. Scott Pittner. How many total blocks are included in mental blocks? Oh, good question. I need to remember that off the top of my head. I keep, I keep somewhere between this. one and 10 million. I think. Yeah, no, there's, <laughs> it's, I want to say there's one of every color of every piece and there's a, a long, there's a longer uh, rectangle, a shorter rectangle. So one, two, big square, small square, triangle and small triangle. So one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, seven times four. So uh, 28, I think there's 28 different pieces in there. Okay. Uh, I might be off by one, but I think that's all of them in there. I'm pretty sure cool. it is. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's, there's one of each color. There's actually four different colors. It's only showing three of them in that particular angle of that puzzle. Uh, but it's uh, blue, white, black, and yellow are the four cool. colors. Yeah, and that is that is Mental Blocks again. Another selling point being a John Gilmore game. We're really excited anytime he puts something out with us. He's, uh, in case anyone missed it, just by chance, so I talked about the last one if you weren't here. Uh, John is our head of games as of uh, the end of the last year. He's devving all of our games. So anything that comes through us goes through at least 200 play tests in his group, in his wide group of play testers. He has tons and tons of play testers that we work with now that he comes with by stock. So that's great. And uh, 
so anything that we go through, it's been devs to heck and back, and uh, we've got a lot of good feedback. It's it, Most of these games have come a really long way from where they started to be as fun as they are. So we're very excited awesome. to have, have him on board to be able to do that and to still be able to make games like this. Yeah, you guys have grown tremendously, right? Obviously, you you joined the team, you know, this past year, and John's joined the team, and just, you know, more people, more great games, more good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. We're excited. Got two new members of the team as well, Nicole and Steve-O, who uh, graphic designer is Steve-O, and uh, our production manager, Nicole. So a lot more stuff's getting taken off Nathan Molly Split, thankfully. Uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun. But just continue to grow. So we're really excited about there you that. go. Um, Adam, Adam Dacano had a yes. question. Uh, can you repeat the estimated release date on Mental Blocks again? Yeah, this one's going to be, it's going to be out at Gen Con. It'll be at store shortly after. This and Machi Core Legacy are probably going to be around the same time. Uh, we might space it out by about a week or so on that one. Uh, but they are, they're going to be hitting in mid-August on those two. And uh, it's gonna, this one will be MSRP for $40, $30.95. Yeah, and if anyone's interested, I did put the the part numbers for those into the the chat as well, so you can grab them from there if you want to do pre-orders for them. Yes, please. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Does anyone have any questions? I think that make brings me to the end of my uh, stuff here. Let me cool. double check here. Yep, There's that's the end. No additional questions that have come in. We kind of covered all the ones that kind of popped in from piece to piece, so I think we're good there. Hunter, thank you. This was great. This is a lot of stuff and a lot of different games that can appeal to a lot of different players, which is awesome. Um, that's always a good thing from a retailer's perspective to have broad options, which is good. Um, retailers, again, thank you very much for joining. As I mentioned at the beginning of the conversation, um, our GTS sales reps will get the information about who is pre-registered and who is here live. So we'll make sure to have them get in touch with you about getting your free copy, the demo copy of Machi Carl 5th Anniversary Edition. Um, and if you have any needs to place orders or any pre-orders, definitely reach out, get in touch with your GTS sales rep, and they can help you out with all that. But until then, Hunter, thank you so much for taking the time. Retailers, always always a pleasure. Thank you for taking the time Absolutely. to join us and taking time out of your stores and everything to learn about this. So really appreciate the time. Hey, no problem at all. Anytime, guys. Thank you all for joining us and thank you for checking out all these new games. All right. Have a great week in your stores and everyone have a wonderful day.